Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Our scripture readings are taken from Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6, and the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. These are the readings for the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I want to focus here on a interesting uh, phrase that John the Baptist says. Um, he says, and I knew him not. And this is sometimes um, people just don't know how to take this because here Jesus is coming to, uh, you know, Jesus is probably at this point uh, in his 30s, of course. And we know that Jesus and John the Baptist were cousins and they were about the same age, probably, you know, of course, less than a year apart in age. And so you have these two men that we assume because their family know each other. They, um, we know that these families had gone up to Jerusalem. Um, so I don't know if we know all the details because of scripture, but we assume that these two people knew each other. These cousins knew each other. Um, and so Jesus or John the Baptist says, I knew him not. Why is it that he didn't recognize Jesus? Why is it that he said he didn't know his own cousin, Jesus? And this is the question uh, that St. Augustine really answers um, in this short reflection today. So there are two reasons why we would say, well, of course he knew him. So, you know, consider these two things first. John the Baptist had said to him, you come to baptize me. It is I who ought to be baptizing you. So John says to Jesus, I am not worthy to baptize you, you must baptize me. So obviously there it shows that he recognized him. The second is, I indeed baptize you with water, but he who is coming after me, he's speaking of Jesus here, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So of course he knows uh, he knows of Jesus and he knows that um, Jesus will be baptizing with Holy Spirit and fire, which is speaking of the sacrament of baptism. It is important to note that what John the Baptist was doing in the Jordan was not a sacrament. This was a ritual, a Jewish ritual of cleansing and forgiveness, um, but it was not uh, what our sacrament of baptism is doing. In other words, it was not getting rid of original sin, and it was not giving sanctifying grace. Those two things could not happen until Jesus dies. So once Jesus dies, um, then the sacraments are able to, of course, take effect. And that is why Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit, because it will be the Holy Spirit that comes um, into our souls at the sacrament of baptism, um, severing that uh, punishment of original sin and giving us sanctifying grace within our soul. So it looks like, of course, John the Baptist definitely knew Jesus. So why does he then say, and I knew him not? And St. Augustine is kind of saying it's not that he doesn't know him. It's that he doesn't know a particular thing about, um, about his revelation. So, for instance, in our society, sometimes we look at a person and says, you know, I thought I knew you better. You know, so I may say to my wife or I may say to my kids or I may say to a friend, you know, obviously I know my wife. I know my kids. I know my friend. I recognize them. I know their name. But I say, um, I thought I knew you better. So there, we can know a person. And then there are certain things, certain mysteries about them, certain, um, I don't know, ways that they act. I didn't know you would act that way. So you may say, I didn't know you. Um, and this is kind of the sense in which John the Baptist is saying to Jesus, of course, he knows Jesus, but there are particular things about Jesus that he does not know. We have to remember that even though St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. John the Baptist, these three are, you know, beautiful souls. You know, uh, Mary is immaculate. Uh, St. Joseph and, and St. John, I mean, the top of the saints, we pray to them all the time. So they know Jesus and they are so knowledgeable of his will, but there are still mysteries that are, are hidden to them. Those, those mysteries need to be revealed. And John the Baptist is having one of those mysteries revealed. Not who Jesus is, but in other words, some of the details of his mission, some of the things that he will do. Um, so was John lying here? No, he was not. He knew Jesus, but he didn't know all the aspects. He didn't know the full revelation. And this is one of the things that St. Augustine says is going to be now revealed to John the Baptist, kind of an insight or a mystery that will be given to John the Baptist that he realizes um, at this great event, the baptism of the Lord. What was it that John learned through the dove? So when he saw the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus, St. Augustine says that John the Baptist is going to realize something here. He's going to see something. And then, of course, uh, this will then be benefit to us too. 
Uh, what did he learn by the dove? Just this, that baptism was to belong to Christ in such a way that although there would be ministers of baptism, the sanctifying effect would be attributed to Christ alone. So I wanna, this is the mystery that John now will know that he did not know before. All right. Um, baptism was to belong to Christ in such a way Although there would be ministers of baptism, the sanctifying effect would be attributed to Christ alone. And this is also the mystery of all the other sacraments. That what we have is when Father so-and-so or Deacon so-and-so or Bishop so-and-so um, baptizes you, they are ministers, but the sacraments belongs to Christ. And so it is truly Jesus Christ through this minister that is doing the baptism, that the effect has taken place, the sanctifying effect has taken place. Same thing's true of Mass. Although it is Father so-and-so saying the Mass, the priest is saying, this is my body, but yet it is not the priest's body, it is Jesus Christ's body. Yes, the priest is saying the words, but these are the words of Christ. So they are in persona Christi. They are in the person of Christ. They are an alter Christus, another Christ. In the confessional, absolvo te, I absolve you. It is Christ working through his minister. So the beauty of baptism is that although we are baptized by different priests, different deacons, maybe different bishops, um, it is Christ who is doing the baptism, baptizing. It is Christ who is affecting that baptism. So it is the baptism of Christ, not of that individual minister. Same thing with confession, same thing uh, with the Eucharist. This is a great mystery, and this is what John is speaking about. I did not know this. I did not know this. He knew Christ, but he didn't know all the mysteries of Christ. And I think this is a beautiful lesson also for us on a different level that we can say, if someone says, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? We can say, yes, I know Christ. But we cannot say, I know all the mysteries of Christ. I know um, his providence, uh, his will for my life, for example. So I think you can see this in three levels. Um, you can say, do you know about Jesus? Do you just know about Jesus? That would be level one. Uh, two, do you know Jesus? Do you have a personal relationship with him? And then three, do you know all the mysteries of Christ in, re in regards to your life? In other words, has he fully revealed to you everything? And I think, uh, of course, number three will not happen until the glory of heaven in which we will finally be there face to face with the one that we love, Jesus Christ, and everything will be fully revealed. Um, that's where we're going for. So we should be somewhere between two and three. Let's say we're at 2.5 that or 2.7 or 2.3, um, that we know Jesus Christ personally as our Lord and Savior, that we're in a relationship with him, that we are praying daily. We are going to Mass weekly. We are regularly confessing. We have this solid relationship with Him. We are living for Him, and we'd be willing to die for Him. And we know that He is slowly or quickly revealing the mysteries of His great love to us. That's where we want to be, and that's what John shows us uh, through this event, the baptism of the Lord. Um, thank you for joining me for this Lexio on the Go. Please take the time to uh, go to linktoliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. And uh, check out our online school. We have a lot of courses. Some are free, some cost money, but all the courses are very beneficial, especially if you're in a parish working with people that need courses on Catholicism, different sacraments, etc. That is linktoliturgy.teachable.com. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.